Hi everyone and welcome to the next Earth Science Review video. We're in Unit 3 Astronomy and we are going to go over Kepler's laws today which are focused on planetary orbits. So there's going to be a little bit of content in the beginning and then we'll do some questions to see if you get it. Alright, here we go. The first thing we have to start out with was the old model of the solar system. So this was the first model ever created of the solar system based on just observations. It's called the geocentric model. And the main facts to know about the geocentric model is that the Earth here is in the center of the model with everything orbiting it, including the sun, and they orbit in perfect circles. So this is the Earth-centered model and they orbit in perfect circles, all right? And the second model is called the heliocentric model, which they fixed most of the problems, except the fact that it still orbits in perfect circles. So this is correct. The sun's in the middle, the moon is revolving around the earth in its own orbit around the sun. However, they're still perfect circles. So you got the geocentric, versus the heliocentric, both of them technically still wrong at this point. It wasn't until Kepler came around until he turned the planets into elliptical orbits. So the modern heliocentric model, the model that we use today, has this diagram, which you're seeing in front, you know, including the new planets we discovered, um, plus the fact that the orbits are not perfect circles. So now we're gonna talk about his three laws. So Kepler's first law states that all planets travel in ellipses with the sun at one of the foci. So we're going to go over what that means real quick. So first of all, we're going to make a little t-chart here. And we're going to say over here is things that are elliptical. And over here are things that are not very elliptical. Okay. So let's start with things that are elliptical first. So an elliptical orbit would be like a, an oval, essentially. So maybe like this. And there are two foci in the middle, or focus points. There's always two in every ellipse. And one of them is always the star or the sun. So we could draw a ton, tons of ellipses here. So we're just going to do like ovals with two dots. And notice you'll see the orbits that are elliptical. The more elliptical I draw it, the further away I have to make the two focus points. Remember, one of them is always the sun. Okay. Now, think words that are associated with elliptical could be, uh, and I don't like to use this word, but you can use it to just teach yourself. It's sort of like an oval. Uh, we call it eccentric. So eccentric means it's very shaped like an oval or an ellipse. Um, we could say the foci are far apart. And we can also say if the eccentricity is greater than 0 0.500, then we would say that that orbit is eccentric. Okay? So now we're going to go over to not very elliptical. If the orbit is not very elliptical, that means it's circular. So we could draw a couple of those, you know, just draw a circle essentially, and the foci are going to be really close together. Remember, one of them is the sun. So we could draw a couple of those. These would be not very elliptical orbits because it's very close to a perfect circle and the two focus points are close together. Now a perfect circle would have the two focus points directly on top of each other, so it would only look like one because they're both in the same exact spot. So a couple of things we could say. We could say it's circular or more circular. Um, this would be not very eccentric because eccentric is uh, more ovally or elliptical. And we could say that if the number is less than 0 0.500, we would say it's not very elliptical. So the planet in our solar system that's the most elliptical is Mercury. And Mercury has an eccentricity of 0 0.206, I believe, um, or 207, can't remember. Uh, but that's the most eccentric planet in our solar system. 
all the other planets are less elliptical than 0 0.206, which means all of the planets in our solar system are not very elliptical or not very eccentric, okay? Now, there is a formula to calculate eccentricity. It's on the front of your reference table. It's E equals D divided by L. D meaning the distance between the two focal points and L meaning the length of the major axis, which is the diameter of the ellipse. A little hint that you can use to remember the numbers. The number zero looks like a perfect circle. So if the number is closer to 0, 0.000, it is more circular and the number one sort of looks like um, a, a bubble letter one, which is very eccentric. So if the number is closer to zero, it's less eccentric. If the number is closer to one, it's more eccentric. Okay, now we're moving on to Kepler's second law. Now there is a mathematical definition of this law, but we're just gonna do quick content. So the idea is that planets speed up and slow down in their orbits, depending on how close to the star they are due to gravity. So I call this the gravity law. So imagine we're gonna draw a little sketch. So we'll draw an orbit. And remember it's got two foci. So one of the foci is gonna be the sun. So we'll put it over here and the other focus would be like over here. It's equidistant from this side to this side as it is from this side to focus two. Focus two doesn't really matter in, in our case right now. So imagine there's a planet here, we'll call it planet X. So planet X is closer to the sun at this point and then it's gonna revolve this way. And then at this point, planet X would be far away from the sun, okay? So we'll say the close position to sun is A, side A, and the far position is side B. So here's what you gotta know. Since the planet is close to the sun, close, it is experiencing a higher gravitational pull from the sun, because the closer you get, the more it pulls on you. And then, since that's gonna happen, its speed or velocity is going to be higher. So it actually moves faster in the area, maybe from like here to here, in the orbit. It moves the fastest because it's closest to the sun. Now, as the planet goes away from the sun, when it gets to B, now we consider this is far away from the sun. So it has less gravitational pull which means it's going to be a slower speed. It's going to be traveling the slowest, maybe from like here to here. And then as it comes back around, it'll speed up and then it goes away and it slows down. So this is, how, this is Kepler's second law. Um, a vocab word associated with B, the point at which the planet is furthest away from the sun, this is called aphelion. And the way I remember it is A for furthest away. And then this point over here is perihelion, which means the point at which the planet is closest to the sun or the star. Okay, so that's Kepler's second law. And Kepler's third law is two relationships. So here they are. The further the planet is from the sun, the slower it orbits. And that sort of overlaps from Kepler's second law. If you look at like, let's say, Neptune, which in this picture is right here. Since it's so far away, the gravitational pull that Neptune is experiencing from the sun is way less than like Mercury over here. Mercury is so close, so it's experiencing way more gravity. And the second part of the law is that the further the planet is, the longer its period of revolution. As you could see, Mercury's path is short, and then Neptune's path, look how long it is. It's super long because it's so far away, it's got to travel such a further distance to go around the sun. All right, so those are Kepler's three laws. So now let's go over a couple of questions to see if you get it. And now remember, if you can, pause the video, answer the question, and then see if you get it right. Okay, what type of model does this diagram best represent? So it's either going to be a geocentric or heliocentric model. So let's start with that first. Which one's in the middle? Oh, the Earth. Well, then it's not heliocentric, so we can get rid of A and B. 
And now, do the in which is it in which celestial objects all orbit the Earth, or is everything orbiting the Sun? Well, in the geocentric model, everything orbits the Earth. So C is the best answer for there. Number two, this system is best classified as what? Is it geocentric or heliocentric? First off, well, the sun's in the middle. So that means it's not geocentric. So this is gone and this is gone. Now, are these orbits perfect circles or no? So let's see, look at this one. This is super duper oval, super duper oval. These are not perfect circles, so we could get rid of D. So C is your best answer for this. Okay, so it says there is a diagram here, and now remember, you should always read the background information on the top. It says, compared to the orbit of the Jovian planets, the orbit of Halley's Comet is what? Well, here's Halley's Comet orbit, and if you could see, this is like super duper elliptical. You can see how oval this is compared to Saturn and Jupiter, which are very almost perfect circles. So Halley's Comet is definitely more elliptical. And if you remember, the sun is always one of the foci. So here's the sun over here in Halley's Comet's orbit. So the distance between here and here would be the same as between here and here. So maybe the second focus would be like over here. So remember, in anything that's more elliptical, the distance between the foci should be more. The more close to a circle it is, the less distance between the foci. So the answer for this one would be letter D. Okay, compared to planet A, planet B has what? This is Kepler's second law, and his third law sort of com combined in the same question. So the closer you are to the star, the more gravity. So planet A is going to have more gravity. So which ones can we get rid of? Planet B has less gravity. So C and D are out. And now we say we, they want to know about period of revolution. The further away the planet is, the longer it takes. So planet B is further away. So this is going to take longer time to go around. So B is the right answer on this one. Next one. Which planet has the least distance between the two foci of the elliptical orbit? So for this question, the least distance, remember we want the lowest eccentricity. We want the one that's closest to a circle. So if you look at eccentricity of orbit, this is page 15 on your reference table, you want the lowest one, which is Venus. Now, if they ask for what one would be the most distance between the foci, you would look for the most, which would, I think, in this case, be Mars. Yeah. So you got to just pay attention to what it's asking. All right, which object is located at one of the foci of the elliptical orbit of Mars? Remember, according to Kepler's first law, the sun is always at one of the foci. Every time. Now you could replace that with a star in general is always at one of the foci, but if it's Mars, that means it's our solar system, which means it's the sun, A. And the last one. So this table shows gravitational data for a planet traveling in an ellipse. The table shows force between the star and the planet. So it shows you like gravitational force. So A is the highest and E is the lowest. So you want A to be nearest the star and then E to be farthest away from the star. So let's see which one that is. Here's the star, A is close, E is furthest, this is good. Here's the star, C is closest, this is bad. Here's the star, G is closest, this is bad. Here's the star, E is closest, this is bad. So B is the best answer. It shows A is the closest, so this would be the highest gravity, E would be the lowest gravity, and then it decreases from A to E, a, B, C, D, E, it's getting slower and slower, and then it increases again from F, G to H back to A. All right, so I got a fun fact for you at the end of this video. Black holes are most commonly found in black socks. All right, so just think about that for the day. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you later. Good luck.